You never know where an emergency vehicle is headed. Heart attacks, strokes, shortness of breath. Working fires, biohazard contamination, search and rescue. Robberies in progress, shootings, car accidents. Oftentimes, drivers aren't sure what to do as emergency vehicles approach. When you see and hear sirens and lights, safely pull over to the right and stop. By doing so, this will allow emergency vehicles to safely pass and continue to their emergency. Driver safety is a responsibility for everyone. Not following the driver safety law for emergency vehicles puts everyone at risk. From emergency personnel, civilian drivers, and people who are waiting help. Not only is driver safety the safe thing to do, it's the law. This can carry points on your license and a fine. So let's be safe. Remember, sirens and lights move to the right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Mike Norman. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Cleveland Division of Fire. And it is my honor and privilege and pleasure to be the Master of Ceremonies for today's awards ceremony. Uh, we welcome all our honored speakers who will be introduced shortly. We are also joined by members of the Executive Board of the Association of Cleveland Firefighters, IEFF Local 93 the vanguards of Cleveland, elected officials, dignitaries, and members of our public safety partners, the Cleveland Division of Police and Cleveland Division of EMS. I also want to welcome the retired members who are, who are in attendance today, as well as the members of the Western Reserve uh, Fire Museum. The museum is open, and uh, we're happy to have them here with us today. At this time, I'll ask everyone to stand and remain standing for the entrance of our award recipients, the presenting of colors, the singing of the national anthem by retired Cleveland Police Detective Jim Kiefer and the invocation from Cleveland Fire Chaplain Father Russell Lowe. Uniformed personnel, please cover. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. 
o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please remain standing for the invocation from Fire Chaplain Father Russell Lowe. Uniform personnel, please uncover. We pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given to us, and for the opportunity and occasion to honor the service, bravery, and dedication for the pres preserving of life and property of these members of the Cleveland Division of Fire and members of our community. Thank you for the committed service. Thank you for their example to others. Thank you for the positive impact they have made to our community. It is your teaching that we should do unto others what we would have them do to us. That has inspired these acts of bravery and determined dedication to others. It is with humble hearts and a sense of our responsibility to be determined and ever vigilant to preserve life and property that we honor these individuals that you have inspired and are ever thankful for your watchful protection over them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Everyone, please be seated. Thank you, Father Lowe. Yeah. And Detective Kiefer, thank you very much. I want to thank the Cleveland Division of Fire Honor Guard. Uh, they always represent the division so well. Uh, I want to thank the Cleveland Firefighters Pipe and Drum Band for providing today's piper. Uh, recently retired Lieutenant Ron Stepka. Nice job, Ronnie. Um, our first speaker is no stranger to public service. He was first elected to Cleveland City Council in 1989 and became council president in 2001. He was elected as, as Cleveland's 56th mayor in 2005 and re-elected to his fourth term in 2017, making him Cleveland's longest serving mayor. Under his leadership, dedication, and foresight, our city has experienced stability, improvement, and growth. I hope he's recovered from Wednesday's State of the City address. It is my honor to introduce the Honorable Mayor Frank G. Jackson. Good afternoon. You know, I want to uh, welcome everyone to a Division of Fire Award Ceremony and congratulate all of you who will be recognized for what you've done and particularly thank you for your service. Um, uh, I often say that service is an honorable profession, public service, but it's not made for everyone. But those who do it and do it well are able to impact the lives of individuals, communities, and families, and that's what you do. And as these scenarios are being read uh, for what you're being recognized for, it really points out what you do on a daily basis that, um, that sometimes I imagine you just take for granted because you're just doing your job. But uh, we fully recognize what you've done and we want to recognize you for doing that. So again, uh, welcome everybody and congratulations to you. Thank you, Mayor Jackson. Our next speaker sits in this chair most Monday nights. Council President Kevin Kelly was first elected to City Council in 2005 
and continues to represent Ward 13, which includes Old Brooklyn and part of the Stockyard neighborhoods. In 2017, he was unanimously chosen to continue on as council president, a position he has held since 2013. He is chairman of council's finance committee and its rules committee. He also serves on two other committees, operations and mayor's appointments. He has long supported Cleveland firefighters and joined us at the Station 42 Ice Cream Social this summer, though he may have just been there for the free Honey Hut ice cream. It's my honor to introduce Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mike. And um, I'll have you know it wasn't just the ice cream. I, my daughter brought me here for the ice cream, but uh, the, those free CPP yo-yos are a big hit in my house as well. <laughs> But I just want to um, congratulate everybody who is, who is here today and really um, just kind of doubling down on, on what the mayor said. Oh, pardon me, before I miss any beats. Um, on behalf of Cleveland City Council and my 16 colleagues, I want to congratulate you. My colleague uh, Marty Kane is in the back, and he is uh, uh, faithfully at every one of, of every one of these ceremonies along with uh, Councilman Zone, who you'll be hearing with. But uh, on behalf of Council, congratulations. Um, Doubling down on what the mayor had to say, uh, I hope that as we're here and we hear about the, the, the awards that are given and the heroism, I hope that you don't forget every day um, how important what you do is to the city of Cleveland. Um, as much as you know, everybody's got a job to do and it, it, it becomes your life after a while, never forget how important it is when, when fire is the first responder to an accident or something. Never forget how much that means to the people that are involved in the accident. Because it really, you know, I mean, all of us up here know that generally fire is the first uh, responders to accidents, whether that's right or wrong, but they are. And that means a lot to people. And, and it's a sense of comfort, and it's really a sense that, you know, w what you do matters so much to people every single day. And I hope that that never gets lost on you. I hope that this never becomes just a job. I hope that every now and then you can take a look back and remember when you uh, were, fir were first on the division, how important that was. And while I ask you to kind of think back on that, I just want you to know that that's how the residents see you. People, people see you the way that you felt that when you were first on the job because of the work that you do is so important to the residents of the city and the, the the great job that people do at like Station 42 in terms of just being a part of the community, having the ice cream social, keeping the building looking nice. And to tell you, at, at least at Station 42, a lot of the work that's done, a lot of the, the firefighters just do it on their own. And that, that means a lot to me. It means a lot to the community that we have this presence in the community. So thank you very much. Congratulations. And I uh, look forward to many good years of working together with you. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President Kelly. Our next speaker has the unique honor of holding a council seat formerly held by both of his parents. He was elected as Ward 15 Councilman in 2001. He is presently the Chairman of the Safety Committee and Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee and has served as the President of the National League of Cities since 2016. It is my honor to introduce Councilman Matt Zone. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Norman. To all of the award recipients uh, today, uh, congratulations. You know, award ceremonies are important. It gets to highlight some of the work that you do, and so I'm thankful that our city each year gets to host these ceremonies. Uh, uh, and so congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, the City Council Safety Committee is really focused on what we can do to uh, shine light on, on the work that each of you do. This past Wednesday, we had a full hearing and briefing. I want to thank Chief uh, Schlomer and Chief Cavillo and your team for presenting Chief Nada around uh, the Fire Training Academy and the recent accreditation. We have been taking members to various firehouses and looking at the physical plant. We're going to do more of that over the course of the year. So I want to thank you for the selfless work that each and every one of you do every day to keep our city safe. And congratulations to all the uh, recipients today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Zone. Our next speaker rose through the ranks of the Cleveland Division of Police, becoming Chief of Police in 2005. He has served as the Director of Public Safety since 2014. It is my honor to introduce Cleveland Public Safety Director Michael McGrath.
Thank you, Lieutenant. Good afternoon, everyone. Great way to start the weekend. Uh, I'd like to begin by cha thanking Chief Cavillo for this opportunity to make a few comments this afternoon relative to these honorees and what you've done for the Division of Fire and uh, the community. I consider it an honor to stand before you today, and I'm pleased to extend my sincere congratulations and gratitude to those of you receiving awards this afternoon. Each day, firefighters go to work and risk their lives for the betterment of this community. That is why it is only fitting that we take time to honor and recognize some of those firefighters for their services. It also is a time we can acknowledge the family members and friends of the honorees and tell them how much we appreciate your efforts, their efforts, and you should be very proud of their accomplishments, very proud. So let me join with your co-workers, your friends, family members, in telling you how proud we are of the service you provide to our community in good times and especially in these times of challenge. Please know your work is appreciated. And while we sh share these shining moments and these career milestones this afternoon with you and your families, I know that you share similar heartening moments with your brothers and sisters in the fire service every day, especially at lunch and dinner, I would imagine. <laughs> but I respect the difficult work that you do. I pray for your continued safety value your dedication and professionalism, and applaud your accomplishments. This afternoon provides us an opportunity to reflect on life's priorities and the difference you make in the lives of each person you serve in our community. And, and on behalf of the lives for whom you have made a difference, I salute and thank each and every one of you, and I pray for your consent continued safety throughout your careers. Thank you. Thank you, Director McGrath. Our final speaker has risen through the ranks of the Cleveland Division of Fire during his 29-year career and has served as Cleveland's first Hispanic fire chief since his appointment in 2015. I'm honored to introduce the chief of the Cleveland Division of Fire, Angelo Cavillo. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go off script for a second here, but I just want to thank everybody today. I want to thank the Honorable Mayor Frank G. Jackson, uh, Safety Director Michael McGrath, Council Members, Councilman Zone, Kelly, Kane, Chief Williams, Deputy Chief Miller, uh, my civilians, Sherry and Chrissy, and, and everybody here today, my command staff, and anybody that, that I forgot, uh, Chief McCall, uh, Everyone here, it's a team effort, and uh, this is a proud moment for us, the Division of Fire today, and I'm so proud of you and what you do, and family members, thank you for all your support, uh, for, pray, for, for prayers and support of these members, these heroic members here today in this great division we call the Cleveland Division of Fire. So I'll start with my presentation. <laughs> I am Fire Chief Angelo Cavillo. I, am, I proudly lead the Cleveland Division of Fire, one of the best fire divisions in the nation. Every day our firefighters work on the front line, responding to all hazards and emergencies, from medical emergencies to motor vehicle accidents, technical rescues, and of course, fires. Cleveland firefighters are ready to respond right now and every hour of every day of the year. But not all days are the same. Some days brings calls that test our teamwork and our training, that challenge our capabilities and our courage. Our members make a difference for the people in the city every day. Some days, it's a difference between life and death. 
Today's awards reflect the diverse and dedicated service the Cleveland Division of Fire provides to our community. You will hear stories of decisive and coordinated action. Some risked their lives to protect others from smoke and flames. Others are recognized for their bravery on the scene of water rescues or facing the challenges of multiple gunshot victims. We will also recognize a man who has tirelessly improved the training of Cleveland firefighters, ensuring our members are highly skilled and ready to respond for the citizen of Cleveland, Ohio. I will personally present the Chief's Award to a man who has been dedicated to the spiritual well-being of the Division of Fire. I want to thank each of you for attending today's ceremony to the recipients. These awards are well earned. You are examples of what makes the Cleveland Division of Fire so great. Thank you and may God bless you and protect you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Cavillo. At this time, we'll have the presentation of awards. I will ask those seated at the dais to stand up and please, reform, please form a receiving line. Would firefighters John McGowan and Greg Juratic please rise? On April 14, 2018, Engine 13 responded to Mill Creek Falls, where two juveniles had fallen from the waterfall into the turbulent waters below. The scene was almost inaccessible, but the members of Engine 13 quickly climbed down a steep 60-foot cliff and found one victim clinging to a branch and the other victim submerged. With no flotation vests available, firefighters McGowan and Juratic jumped into the frigid water and began to search for the missing child. After a few minutes, the chief of the 2nd Battalion, observing from a viewing deck across the river, was about to order the firefighters out of the water when firefighter Juratic located the victim in approximately six feet of water. Firefighters Juratic and McGowan were able to pull the victim up and bring him to the water's edge, where he was pulled from the water by other members of Engine 13. For bravely risking their lives in this swift water rescue, firefighters John McGowan and Greg Juratic are awarded the Medal of Valor. Congratulations. Would Firefighter Patrick McCarthy please rise? Captain Brendan McNamara was unable to attend today's ceremony, but will also be honored with our next award. We return to the scene <clears throat> of the Mills Creek Falls, and like Paul Harvey, I will tell you the rest of the story. Captain McNamara and Firefighter McCarthy had also scrambled down the steep embankment and held the rescue rope while firefighters McGowan and Juratic located the victim in the frigid waters. Captain McNamara and Firefighter McCarthy pulled the victim from the water and initiated CPR. Cleveland Fire Rescue Squad 1 had arrived on the scene and deployed a Stokes basket down the steep slope. Firefighter McCarthy guided the victim into the Stokes basket 
and guided him back up the cliff and continued CPR along with the crew of EMS 13 en route to the hospital. For their efforts and exceptional bravery during this water rescue, Captain Brendan McNamara and Firefighter Patrick McCarthy are awarded the Florian Cross. Congratulations. Would Captain Steve Manzuk, Firefighter Isaiah McClowski, Firefighter Tyrell Kiangazi, and Firefighter James Schaffner please rise. On July 28, 2017, Tower One responded to the 55th Street Marina where they spotted a group of stranded boaters approximately 200 feet out on the narrow, jagged break wall. None of the boaters were wearing life jackets. The members of Tower One quickly donned life jackets, gathered extras for the victims, and proceeded to make the treacherous trek along the break wall. Proceeding in a single file line and facing waves estimated at seven to eight feet, as they crashed over the break wall, the firefighters reached the imperiled civilians, helped them don life jackets, and walked them back to safety. For putting themselves in harm's way with little regard for their personal safety, Captain Steve Manzuk, Firefighter Isaiah McClowski, Firefighter Tyrell Kiangazi, and Firefighter James Schaffner are presented with the Florian Cross. Congratulations. Will Lieutenant Guy Estergal and Firefighter Dennis Myslensky please rise? The call came in as chest pain, indicating a life-threatening condition for the patient. Arriving on scene, Lieutenant Estergal and the members of Engine 26 found a scene that would endanger both the victim and their crew. An elderly gentleman had used a scissor jack to raise his vehicle so he could work underneath it. The jack was placed on a brick and lifted the car from a plastic bumper. The would-be mechanic had not placed any cribbing under the vehicle to catch it if the jack failed. As the man slid under the car, the car slipped partially off the jack, pinning him below. The chest pain was actually a car compressing the victim's chest and limiting his ability to breathe. Cleveland Fire has 11 ladder trucks and two rescue squads stationed across the city, all equipped with the jaws of life and specialized tools like rams which would have quickly lifted the car. Our engine companies don't carry these tools and Engine 26 did not have time to wait for their arrival. What, 20, what Engine 26 did have that day was a quick thinking team and a rabbit tool, which is a small hand pumped hydraulic tool used to force open doors by spreading the doorway away from the door frame. Despite knowing <clears throat> that the unsteady car could fall and crush them both along with the victim, Lieutenant Estergal and Firefighter Myslinski 
crawled under the vehicle to place a large rock and the rabbit tool, creating a makeshift ram. As the car began to lift, Lieutenant Estergall ordered Firefighter Myslinski out from under the precarious car. For their willingness to expose themselves to the danger of crawling beneath the weight of an unstable vehicle to save the victim's life, Lieutenant Estergall and Firefighter Myslinski are awarded the Florian Cross. Congratulations. Lieutenant Brian Volman is in your program, but he was unable to attend today's ceremony. I will reference his efforts in an upcoming award. Would Lieutenant Harold Martin, Firefighter Robert Graham, and Firefighter Andrew Hartnett please rise? Firefighter Patrick Mangan is also receiving this award, was unable to attend as well. On April 1, 2017, Engine 13 responded to a reported house on fire and arrived to find three structures on fire. A two and a half story house was well involved with fire showing from the first, second, and attic windows. The intensity of the fire caused it to spread to a 60,000 foot warehouse on the right and a two and a half story house on the left that was occupied by an elderly couple. The four members of Engine 13 acted quickly, deploying a three-inch line with a portable ground appliance to protect the warehouse, a two-inch hand line to protect and extinguish the house on the left, and the elderly couple was located and moved to safety, all before other units were on scene. Their quick and coordinated actions were, in effect, the work of two companies. Their efforts saved life and property that day. For their flawless execution of a complicated and dangerous scene, Lieutenant Harold Martin, Firefighter Robert Graham, Firefighter Patrick Hageman, and Firefighter Andrew Hartnett received the Distinguished Service Award. Congratulations. At this time, I'll ask Firefighter Jeffrey Nisinik to please rise. Lieutenant Philip Seeger, Firefighter Brian Corbett, and Firefighter Charles Vineyard are also being recognized, but were unable to attend today's ceremony. On November 24, 2017, Engine 41 was dispatched to the intersection of East 116th and Buckeye, where they found a, a horrific scene, a mass casualty incident with multiple juvenile victims shot. It was a chaotic scene with victims both on the sidewalk and inside the stores. 
members of Engine 41 went to work triaging and treating the multiple patients. Firefighters Corbett and Vineyard quickly stabilized two patients, both shot in the leg, while Lieutenant Seeger and Firefighter Nasinic went inside a store on Buckeye, where they found a victim who had been shot in the chest. Firefighter Nasinic, a former EMS paramedic, quickly assessed the victim as DOA. At hearing this news, the store owner became upset and brandished a firearm, waving it around just feet away from Firefighter Nasinic. Fortunately, a member of Cleveland Police was also on scene and talked the man into dropping his weapon. Firefighters Corbett and Vineyard had moved on to two more patients, one shot in the abdomen and the other in the arm. They sta stabilized the patients and assisted with loading them into a Cleveland EMS ambulance for transport. Lieutenant Seeger and Firefighter Nasinic exited the store and found yet another victim, this one with a gunshot wound to the head and severe trauma to his skull, but still alive. Firefighter Nasinic assisted his breathing, keeping him alive until Cleveland EMS could transport him. For this incident, we are especially thankful for our partners in public safety, Cleveland Police and Cleveland EMS, for their calm and professional treatment of the victims of this mass casualty incident, their outstanding individual actions as part of an effective team the members of Engine 41 receive the Distinguished Service Award. Congratulations. Would Battalion Chief Tom Schlomer please rise? When firefighters are asked how we handle emergency situations, whether fires, motor vehicle extrications, or medical emergencies, the answer is often that we revert to our training. Thanks to the work of Chief Schlomer, that training has never been better. Our Fire Training Academy is now accredited by the state of Ohio meaning we no longer have to rely on the certification of others to prepare Cleveland firefighters. Chief Schlomer also led the implementation of a new computer program, Target Solutions, which tracks training, certifications, and continuing education, and moves us closer to becoming a paperless fire department. From new cadets to seasoned veterans and officers of every rank, Chief Schlomer personifies the rising tide that raises all boats. For his tireless dedication and steady leadership as the Director of Training, Battalion Chief Thomas Schlomer receives the Fire Service Award. Congratulations. Would Assistant Chief Anthony Missig and Lieutenant Michael Rabkevich please rise? On July 7, 2017, Chief Anthony Missig was in charge of the 4th Battalion on Cleveland's west side. Lieutenant Rabkevich was in charge of Engine 42 on Pearl Road. Early that morning, both units responded to a house fire at 2908 Searsdale where they found heavy smoke billowing out of every window of a two-story house and imperiled residents hanging out of the front windows on the second floor. Our engine companies have a complement of ladders for just such an emergency. With no ladder truck on scene, the members of Engine 42 raised their ground ladder to the window. While other members of Engine 42 stretched hose lines and performed a search of the first floor, Chief Missig and Lieutenant Rabkevich went up the ladder to the second floor. Chief Missig handed a three-year-old boy to Lieutenant Rabkevich, who carried the child to safety. 
Chief Missig then assisted a 20-year-old female and a 33-year-old male down the ladder and away from the deadly smoke. It should be noted that this rescue started before the Cleveland Fire Companies were on scene. Lieutenant Brian Volman was working at Cleveland Fire Dispatch that morning and was on the phone with the trapped occupants. Lieutenant Volman calmed and reassured the woman, instructed her to close the bedroom door and open the front window, then relayed her exact location to Chief Missig and Lieutenant Rabkavich as they arrived on the scene. For his efforts behind the scenes at Fire Dispatch, Lieutenant Brian Volman will receive the Distinguished Service Award. For effecting the daring rescue of three people from the Searsdale Fire, Assistant Chief Anthony Missig and Lieutenant Michael Rabkevich receive the Lifesaver Award. Congratulations. Would Firefighter Neil Raleigh please rise? On sweetest day, October 21, 2017, Firefighter Neil Raleigh attended a wedding in Detroit, Michigan. That's not the heroic part. At the reception afterward, the groom's mother's best friend's husband suddenly collapsed at the table. He had stopped breathing and had an irregular heartbeat. Firefighter Raleigh immediately assessed the victim, administered CPR, and had the patient revived by the time first responders arrived on the scene. This is yet another example of an off-duty firefighter being in the right place at the right time to make a difference for someone, but it only begins to describe the dedication of Firefighter Raleigh. Neil Raleigh is a fireman's fireman. He is extremely well respected and his name on our job is gold. Firefighter Raleigh has been on Ladder 30 on St. Clair in the 6th Battalion, protecting the Glenville neighborhood for so long that he was actually assigned there when it was still designated as Ladder 14, which changed in 1983 for, for some of us. Ladder 30 is a perennial candidate for Cleveland Fire Department Ladder of the Year, and Firefighter Raleigh is so dedicated to Ladder 30 that he has been known to come in on an off day if the truck has been out of service for repair or maintenance and help organize the tools as she's put back in service. For saving the day last fall in Detroit and his immeasurable service to the people of Glenville, Firefighter Neil Raleigh receives the Lifesaver Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Would Firefighter Mark Miller please rise? Firefighters have to be adaptable to whatever situation presents itself, and Firefighter Miller is a good example. On January 8, 2017, Firefighter Miller was driving Ladder 11 to a box alarm, which later turned out to be a false alarm, when they came upon a working fire in an occupied taxpayer, which is what we call a building with businesses on the first floor and apartments above it. While other companies were being dispatched to the scene, three members of Ladder 11 went into the building to perform search and rescue. Firefighter Miller was alone on the street when he heard an elderly woman calling for help from a smoky balcony above. Firefighter Miller quickly raised the ladder to the balcony, but the woman could not climb over the ladder. As a member of the Cleveland Police butted the ladder, Firefighter Miller went up the ladder into the heavy smoke he had not had time to get dressed in turnout gear or don his air mask, but he braved the heat and smoke to help the woman over the railing 
onto the ladder and down to safety. For his heroic actions on East 93rd Street that day, Firefighter Mark Miller receives the Lifesaver Award. Congratulations. Father Lowe, please rise. Our last award goes to an individual who has committed his life to the service of others. Father Lowe has been the chaplain for the Cleveland Division of Fire for seven years. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your continued dedication and service to the City of Cleveland and the Division of Fire. We especially want to thank you for always putting in a good word for us with your boss. We, we always appreciate that. Father Lowe holds the honorary rank of battalion chief with the Cleveland Division of Fire, but we know he's always on the back step with us, just one of the boys. Congratulations, Father Lowe. At this time, I'll ask everyone to stand for the benediction by Father Russell Lowe. Since I have the microphone for a few moments, I will just say it. it's a pleasure being the chaplain for the Cleveland Division of Fire, and uh, very thankful, except for one incident, that it's always been uh, at happiest ceremonies such as this or a graduation or promotion services. But as Mr. McGrath said, to echo his words, please be assured that you are in my prayers every day for your safety and for your family's well-being as well. May the Lord our God bless all present here as we have recognized these individuals for their dedication and bravery to our community and its citizens. We ask your blessing upon all first responders. Protect them from harm in the performance of their duties. Inspire within us a selfless, unwavering devotion to the duty to preserve life, community, and property. Grant, we pray, joy and fulfillment to all gathered here and their families. And for those who have gone before us, eternal rest. And may Almighty God bless us who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. And now in closing, I just want to say that uh, being a member of the Cleveland Division of Fire is a great opportunity to serve. But once we come out of the Fire Training Academy, we each have different careers that in themselves present unique opportunities to serve. And I want to congratulate the men here who each in their own way made both the Cleveland Division of Fire and the City of Cleveland so proud. I want to thank everyone in the gallery for coming today. Stay safe. This concludes our ceremony. Thanks for coming.